Sawyer here. Continuing with the uh, Four Horsemen Prophecy of uh, Revelations chapter 6. And before I continue with Revelation 6 4, I want to mention an example of uh, how the Kingdom of God thinks in terms of human beings that are in their flock that they have chosen to um, be in their flock uh, how they compare human beings with animals now that's not to look down on animals animals are great uh, for what they are they're just limited and human beings are great for what they are but they are also limited. So for the kingdom of God to um, talk about humans as animals isn't a put down. It'd be like a, uh, a teacher talking to kindergartners as if there's something wrong with them. Because they're only kindergartners. Anyway, and if, if there was a teacher like that, they would be a human teacher. The kingdom of God doesn't have bias like that. Um, so, but here in Zechariah, chapter 10, verse 3, Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, the house of Judah. He's talking about the house of Judah being his flock, the Lord of hosts. And hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. So he's talking about how um, the kingdom of God was look, looking at the humans in their flock as battle horses. Um, and the house of Judah is talking about the genetic house that of physical bodies. That's why in this prophecy of the four horsemen, we're talking we're talking about and conquering and and everything and. Uh, that's why we can equate the, these. Um, and Tiendo, like I said in the previous taping, uh, compared the next level to ranchers um, capturing the wild horses and offering them training to become tame so that they can become of service and to where uh, some, some of them will actually really be glad that they were given that opportunity because they really enjoy the relationship they have with the rancher. Now on to Revelation 6 verse 4. There went out another horse that was red, color of fire, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Now, when we talk about great sword, then we don't follow it with uh, out of the mouth, sword of the mouth, and uh, then we're talking about a military might. And that power was given to this red horse, this military might. In other words, uh, Tiendo said that a lot of things were being held back. Um, the kingdom of God was holding a lot of things back from the world uh, to give time for the classroom, the group of students that were going through their overcoming process and binding, binding to their older members' mind, uh, give them time to do that. Because uh, not too many years from now, uh, it would, will probably be impossible for such a group to exist because there will be such a um, campaign to stamp out anybody that is um, uh, bucking the system, that doesn't receive the mark, so to speak. Whether that's a physical mark or that's actually a, a mark in terms of allegiance. Um, I think it will be both. I think it is both already. Um, so. Uh, uh, 
The term red used here is the Greek purhos, P-U-R-R-H-O-S, which is color of fire and describes the horse whose rider is given, given power. Remember, this is the kingdom of God, like, is giving these visions and uh, dreams and, and perspectives to uh, the individual called John. And given that power to take peace from the earth, to kill, which is the Greek S-P-H-A-Z-O, spazo, to, which means actually literally to slay by physical violence. Isn't that clear? As opposed to the, the kill that was used in... Uh, um, that the two witnesses would be killed, uh, and the word used there was apokaintu, katino, no, apo, a-p-o-k-t-e-i-n-o, apokaintu, um, which wasn't clearly killed, but this is much more clearly killed, so that's, a, that's an idea of, you know, uh, the difference in terms, of course, and how the English word used was the same in both cases. They were using the word, they translated it to kill. Now, who's influencing that? Who wants to make it seem like one is killed and one is not? And one has reference to weapons, sword. A sword is a weapon. And it doesn't say sword of the tongue, sword of the mouth. It does, that is used. So clearly this kill has more grounds to think of in terms of being uh, uh, a military styled uh, killing, death. It's clearly warmongering. So the red horse basically is a warmonger. And so what do we see that happened after the white horse left? After 1997, we see a commandeering of the country by the 2000 coup in the United States, which is the New Jerusalem, the New Judea. And uh, I won't go into the scripture that points to that right now. But, um, but because of the 9-11 event, 9-11-2001, the World Trade Center attack, uh, there is now a policy of endless war. There are no more borders. So, um, so Bush, by be coming into power as a result of what? Supreme Court ruling that a state overruling, well, was ruling that the state did not have to recount the votes. And simultaneous with that, Al Gore, hours before it was declared a victory for uh, Bush, hours before, I watched it on TV, uh, said that every vote would be counted and it was determined that he had the popular vote. Uh, especially if the Florida vote had been counted. And uh, so the Supreme Court, which is not supposed to have jurisdiction over the state Supreme Court of Florida, uh, especially in matters of elections uh, for the state. So they, that was a coup d'etat. And, and, and that was the Republican Reds. They're actually very communist in reality because of the way that uh, they've taken... Uh, the freedom to trade, which has been gone on for a long time. Uh, Reagan was instrumental in in, uh, in spreading U.S. commercialism all around the planet, which uh, uh, coincided with uh, all kinds of military maneuvers in, in South America and other places. And then the Star Wars program that Reagan presided over, and then Reagan saying that to the United Nations that there was an, there were aliens that. We need to come together, uh, to unite with the Russians, not fight the Russians in order to think about the threat from the aliens. So, so the the Republicans have basically being red. It's a fascist red as well as a communist red, and uh, and so that's what we got big time in 2000. And I made a, a silly prophecy in 2000 when Bush got elected. I said that Bush would not leave power. And what do we see? We see Obama in power, theoretically. But we see all the policies of Bush. Don't forget, it was the Bush administration that set all this financial mess into play. And it was the Obama administration that had to pick it up. 
and then it's Wall Street that that took it over and and some of the Wall Street people were already in bed with the Republicans at that time and the administration so uh, there really wasn't uh, a change in power when Obama took office it was more of the same but with a different face and that face was the black horse and that face the black horse as it, as it says in here I didn't realize I was going to go this far I might as well um, And when he had opened the third seal, now notice these are in a row. And they're sealed because they were sealed before Tian Do left. And the classroom left. They were sealed. But after they left, they were, those seals were opened. Uh, starting with the first seal of, uh, of uh, um, Tian Do. Um, so the other seals were opened after that, after they left. Anyway, so I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Well, in November 2008, I had a dream with Destody. Uh, I knew Destody's vehicle, named Thomas Nichols, brother of Nichelle Nichols, a lieutenant of horror in the TV show Star Trek. He was the eldest member of Tiendo's classroom with a black vehicle. He came to me in a dream, and... The only thing I remember from the dream was the, the words Barack Obama. And this was in 2008, right before he was elected, literally before the election day. And, uh, and so I voted for Barack, thinking that that's when he was giving me a signal that I should vote for Barack. It was about a month later that I realized that the, the third horse was described as a black horse. So, and, then, and then he presides over the biggest financial crisis in uh, world history. It's affecting the entire world. And it's been manipulated to be that way. And I won't go into that at this point. Maybe a, a, a future talk. But the pair of balances is a yoke. It's a burden. It's in his hand. It's his task to handle. Yielding economic scarcity for the laborers, slaves of corporate capitalists. The measures indicate a day's work is the cost of a day's food, thus subsistence. But not hurt the oil and the wine, I believe, refers to those in service to the kingdom of God and those who are ripening to produce fruit. New believers in Tiendo, whom upon believing provide service to the kingdom of God by spreading seed of truth about Tiendo. By the way, just because this suggests Bush as the red horse and Obama as the black horse doesn't imply kingdom of God that these are kingdom of God members as their riders. The ride, the horse, uh, the way this is worded, uh, they're being ridden. Uh, the horse is determining their rider by who they give their allegiance to, and in this case, the riders are actually the Luciferian space aliens of the black horse and the red horse and the horse to come, the green or yellowish green or pale horse.